Good evening, guys. Welcome to Bedtime Stories with Miss Austin. I hope you're ready for another good story. Tonight, I'm going to read a nonfiction story about the Wright brothers and their first flight. These are really fun books if you've never seen them before. Fly on the Wall in History. So these are fun nonfiction stories told by little flies that were on the wall. So this is The Wright Brothers' First Flight by A Fly on the Wall in History by Thomas Kingsley Troop. One day in 1903, Horace and I found ourselves in Dayton, Ohio. We were outside a bicycle shop listening to two men talking. The men were brothers named Oroville and Wilbur Wright. They wanted a way for people to travel through the air. <laughs> Funny, people can't fly. Only bugs and birds can do that. Horace and I were curious, so we flew into the shop to hear more. We saw drawings of wings the brothers were going to build. The wings didn't look anything like the ones on our backs. The Wright brothers called their fake wings a flying machine. They worked on it when they weren't fixing bikes. I saw a photo of Wilbur, and he was flying. He was lying down on something the brothers called their 1902 glider. They talked about how they wanted to be able to go farther. The 1902 glider was the third glider the Wright brothers had built. They connected bicycle chains to a small moving flap called an elevator. Pulling the chains made the glider go up or down. The brothers steered by moving their hips. Horace and I stuck around a while. Orville and Wilbur talked about building an engine for their flying machine. They got help from a man named Charles Taylor. The engine has to be lightweight, Orville said, no more than 200 pounds. We needed to produce at least eight horsepower, Wilbur said. The Wright brothers were really smart. They weren't messing around. They worked with a wooden box with a fan attached to it. It was called a wind tunnel, and they used it to test wings for their new flyer. I flew by the wind tunnel once for a closer look, and it blew me away. Next, Orville and Wilbur carved long sticks called propellers. They planned to attach them to the engine using bicycle chains. Could this flying machine work? We were going to find out. Horace and I followed the brothers to a place called Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. Horace was spooked at first. He was afraid of hawks. Kitty Hawk had a lot of sand dunes, hills, and wind, but I didn't see any hawks. Orville and Wilbur unpacked the flyer pieces in a big empty building. They called it a hangar. I guess that's where the flyer was going to hang out once they put it together. The Wright brothers put the wings on first. Next, they put the propellers and the engine into place. Orville looked worried. He told Wilbur their flyer might be too heavy. I'm just a little fly, but I'm a huge expert on flying. The brothers' flyer was 21 feet long, and the whole thing weighed 605 pounds. There was no way that thing was going to fly. With the weather just right, it was time to try and fly. A group of men pushed the flyer up the hill. The brothers said a prayer and Wilbur took out a coin. He flipped it to see who would try the flyer first and Wilbur won. The engine started and boy was it loud. Two kids and a dog got scared and ran away. The flyer slid on the rail and started to lift. A few seconds later, the engine stopped and the flyer crashed. The Wright brothers weren't going to give up. They worked quickly to repair the damage. Wilbur sent a telegram to their dad, Bishop Milton Wright. He wanted him to know how things were going. Morning came, and I nudged Horace awake. He said he had been dreaming about flies riding bicycles. Everyone was ready to watch the Wright brothers' second try. There was even a man with a camera. We buzzed over to watch. This time, it was Orville's turn to be the pilot. He climbed aboard. The engine started, and the flyer moved down the rail. I was pretty sure it was going to crash again, but it didn't. The flyer actually flew. It didn't stay up for long, but it flew. The brothers' short first flight wasn't enough. Horace and I watched them try again and again. They took turns. Each time, the flyer flew a little farther and a little longer. Wilbur flew for the fourth and final time that day. 
The flyer was in the air for almost a minute. It flew 852 feet. The Wright brothers had done it. They had invented the first working airplane. Horace and I stuck around. We wanted to see Orville and Wilbur fly some more the next day. If they flew farther each time, who knew how far they'd go? But that wasn't going to happen. Without warning, a gust of wind blew across the dunes. It caught the flyer and flipped it over, knocking it to pieces. No one was hurt, but the world's first airplane was never going to fly again. Even so, the Wright brothers didn't seem too upset. They knew how to fly. Any new machine they built would be even better. Even though their flyer was wrecked, the Wright brothers felt good. They wanted to share their news with their family back home, so they sent a telegram. Success, four flights Thursday morning, all against 21 mile wind, started from level with engine power alone, average speed through air, 31 miles. Longest, 57 seconds. Inform the press, be home at Christmas. The Wright brothers continued to work on their airplanes. The 1903 flyer could fly only in a straight line and for only around one minute. Orville and Wilbur spent two years making new flyers. They made fixes to the controls, engine, and propellers. Near the end of 1905, their new flyer could fly more than 30 minutes and do figure eights in the sky. On October 5, 1905, Wilbur flew 24 miles in almost 40 minutes. Four days later, the Wright brothers wrote a letter to the U.S. War Department. They asked if the government would like to buy the world's first practical airplane. What I love most about this story is that um, Orville and Wilbur, they didn't give up. It didn't work the first time, so they kept making changes and trying new things until they got it figured out. So that perseverance really paid off, and today you can take an airplane all the way around the world if you want to. Sweet dreams. See you at school tomorrow.